Hey, welcome to the ground lesson for arrival and departure procedures out of Langley Airport. Okay, so just to recap where you'd reference this, if you open up the CFS to look at Langley, you'll notice that for VFR arrival departure routes, it refers you to the fixed wing arrival departure routes, VTPC. So then you've got to flip over to the Langley Regional VFR terminal procedures chart, and this is where you'll find the arrival departure routes for Langley. Uh, they've done some nice updates, so you've got um, pretty much all of the arrival and departure routes here, and we'll go through them in a little bit of detail. Now, before we go any further, I just want to quickly highlight the arrival procedures are to first grab the ATIS that'll give you an indication of what runway is going to be in use. Contact tower 119.05 five miles from the airport and no lower than 1,500 1, feet ASL. And then they'll give you an inbound clearance via a VFR reporting point. For the departure procedure, no higher than 1,000 feet unless you're cleared higher and or not given a departure procedure and follow the local noise abatement procedures. That's only for runway 19. And just make sure that you intercept the outbound route uh, one mile from the airport. So we'll start with the departure procedures and we'll take a look at all of these different call out points. Now, if you don't wanna watch the rest of this video, you can just jump on Google Earth and find all of these call out points. But if you wanna stick around, we'll go through them in a bit of detail and I'll help you uh, with navigating to them in the uh, event that you do not have a GPS, which most of the planes I fly do not have. So because you're flying without a GPS, it's very important to be able to see and recognize these three landmarks, Trinity University, 232nd Interchange, and Thunderbird Race Park, because their arrival and departure points that are really close together and therefore have a high likelihood of traffic moving in opposite directions at different altitudes. So be very cautious to maintain your assigned altitude until cleared higher or lower, as tower might be using altitude to maintain separation. Visually, if you are given a Trinity departure, you're almost flying over top of the greenhouses and you're gonna to need to leave the zone, which is over top of the highway, crossing the highway with the 232nd interchange visible on your right-hand side and Trinity University beneath you. Alternatively, if you're given a Thunderbird departure, you're going to be heading more eastbound. So you're gonna to need to leave the zone, crossing the highway with the 232nd interchange on your left-hand side and visible, and preferably over top of that collection of white buildings which identifies the Thunderbird Race Park. If you intend to part northeast from runway 19, you'll very likely be given a poppy departure. To fly the poppy departure, a good way of tracking your route would be to follow the Fraser Highway once you have followed the noise abatement procedures and avoided flight over that built up area. Follow the Fraser Highway until tower clears you en route or until you reach the poppy golf course. Since it can be hard to identify the poppy golf course with all of that green down there, I can recommend that you look for the point where the Fraser Highway merges with 40th Avenue. And then at the next major road that runs north-south, which happens to be 248th Street, you can turn northbound if that is your flight planned route. You should be able to see the 264th interchange out in the distance. Important to keep in mind is that 264 interchange is also a call-up point for arrival into Langley. So be weary that there might be traffic inbound to that area at around the 1500 foot mark and keep your eyes out for that traffic to make sure that there's no conflict if you're going to be flying that direction. Cloverdale Racetrack is relatively easy to locate as it does actually look like a giant racetrack, though it's helpful to remember that it does sit just off 64th Avenue if you happen to be following 64th Avenue out of the zone. Each time you see this symbol, it is a geographical feature that both ATC and pilots will use to identify a position. Therefore, it's both helpful and important that you study your maps well and know what these geographical points look like so that you can identify them from the air. I do recommend Google Maps as I find the tilt function to be useful in identifying landmarks at a slant angle. For practice, I want you to visually find and identify the 264th interchange Fort Langley and the Mad Maid Lakes in Google Earth or Apple Maps or a similar 3D mapping program. Although it is your responsibility when you're flying to an area to know the call-up points of an area, 
If you're ever in a position where you don't understand the landmark that ATC just referred to, just let them know by using the word unfamiliar. And in such a case, they will likely vector you. It's more work for them, but is infinitely better than flying blind to a landmark that you don't recognize. Now that you know the circuit patterns of this airport, you can start to anticipate your arrival and departure paths, and you won't need me to guide you in. And this is the idea. I want you to develop a sense of how you'll be organizing your arrival back to the airport, as this will greatly help you later in your training. So if we are arriving from the east or the northeast, say the Glen Valley area, then we can position ourselves at either the 264th interchange to the east of the airport, or we can position ourselves at Fort Langley to the north of the airport for our arrival. I just want you to take a moment to remember that there are corridors flowing in and out of the airport and knowing where that traffic is coming from can help you see and avoid this traffic. And this is critical when flying VFR. So remember that based on which runway is in use, you can almost predict where the traffic flows are coming from and then work with tower to avoid conflicts. So let's take a look at one of the approaches. Okay, so let's look at an example of how these flows work. So let's say you're coming in from 264th, so you call up over 264th at 1,500 feet, and you call up tower, and they're going to clear you in for an approach. Now, if runway 01 is active, what approach can you expect to see, and where do you expect to see outgoing traffic? Well, what you're likely to see is if runway 01 is in use, they'll probably give you a right downwind for runway 01 and outbound traffic will be heading north. So you can see how that kind of separates the traffic flows. Another example of, let's say we're coming in from 264th and 19 is active. So they might give us a left base for 19 and outbound traffic will be directed south. Again, keeping the flows relatively separated. Last one is the easier one. So they might give us a cleared straight in for runway 25 if 25 is active. And then they'll be sending again outbound traffic towards the north. So you can see how these inflow and outflows help to separate traffic, and it works regardless of what runway is in use. One last thing is because there is extensive helicopter activity around the Langley Airport, it's really good to know what these helicopter routes are. Um, so again, this can be found in the CFS, and you can see that helicopters have access points at Milner to the north, which is just south of those greenhouses, and 232nd Street, and um, just down at the bottom at 216th Street. That's kind of the, the major points where you might have uh, a real, you might really need to know where these helicopters are if you hear them operating in the area because they're probably gonna be operating close to you. So uh, take a good look at the VFR route for helicopter traffic as well. And that'll give you a good idea of where these helicopters are going to be if you do hear them on the radio operating around the airport, which you probably will at some point in time uh, during your training.